Hello, my name is Igor and welcome to my tech farm. In this video, I would like to find out uh, are those objects printed one by one separately stronger compared to those printed at the same time. But uh, let's go step by step. In first part of this video, I would like to talk about the theory. But if you are not new to see the printing properly, you will be familiar with those questions. And in the second part, I will do that layer adhesion test, which I mentioned earlier. Okay, so for example, you download something from the Thingiverse and uh, import all of STL files into Slicer, slice it, send to see the printing, and uh, then watch that first layer, and you go to sleep. Next day in the morning, you will find uh, hopefully nice printed objects and uh, not some kind of bird nest. And actually, this is the only advantage of this multi printing method the time. Because you have to start the printing only once, and then the printer will do the rest, you don't have to be there. Now, of course, this is a very important advantage, so I'm using this method all the time. And, but it has some disadvantages. For example, uh, it is more risky. If only one object moves from the bed surface, it may, uh, it may ruin the whole printing. Uh, maybe some other parts will be printed correctly, but from this moment it is very risky printing. More about this risk, I will talk at the end of this video in conclusions. Second problem with this method is that you have to use uh, same color and same material. I mean, how boring is this, right? Sometimes I split them just to have different colors because uh, that part will look much better if it is uh, separated uh, at the color. But sometimes, for example, with this part, I use not only two different colors, but also I use some TPU here on these uh, parts to get a better functional part. The third disadvantage is uh, more stringing. Of course, with PLA and with I know, dry PETG, you will not notice this problem. But, uh, for example, with TPU, where you have to reduce the retraction or completely disable it, uh, definitely you will see more stringing. You, you cannot completely disable the stringing with the TPU. And now imagine that you print one cylinder. It can be printed without moving the nozzle from one part to the other. And you will get very nice printing even with the TPU. But uh, if you place, I don't know, three or four parts, the cylinders on the build plate, in that case, the nozzle has to move from one part to the other every single layer, and that will result a lot of stringing. And now let's talk about that layer adhesion. Uh, in theory, uh, if you print the objects one by one, in that case, uh, the layer adhesion will be stronger because the layer printing time is shorter, the layer will not cool down before it gets the next layer on the top. I hope that this difference will be negligible, hardly measurable, uh, but for this I need this experiment, so I prepared these uh, test specimens. Uh, I don't use my standard test specimens for a layer adhesion test because uh, these are uh, solid inside, 100% infill. Instead I wanted more realistic uh, objects for uh, this layer adhesion test. So these test specimens are hollow inside, they are printed with uh, 3 perimeters and 20% infill. First I printed 5 pieces one by one. In this case, the layer printing time here in the middle where the diameter is 10 millimeters was approximately 8 or 9 seconds, so very short uh, layer printing time. And at the end I marked them uh, with letter S as a single part printing. Next five pieces I printed at the same time. I spread them a little bit on the uh, bed surface to get a longer layer printing time which was in this case uh, above uh, 40 seconds. And at the end I marked this uh, test specimens with letter M as a multi-part printing. And now I have these test specimens prepared, now I have to do the, the, this pooling test and to measure the breaking load and in few hours uh, I will see the results which method is stronger but you you will know the results in a few seconds
and the testing is finished and at this moment I can't really tell the difference from the feeling so first I have to uh, get the numbers from the footage and analyze the results. According to these numbers, the average brake load for multi-pass 3D printing method was bigger for more than 10%. So these are really surprising results. You know, a good engineer will give you an explanation to anything. So, are there any good engineers between my viewers to help me out? Because I'm definitely confused. <laughs> I was expecting opposite results. Uh, but the difference is more than 10%, so that cannot be, I don't know, measuring error or printing error or something like that. I check everything, the parameters, I analyze the cross-section, I cannot see any difference in between the uh, two types. Uh, anyway, so these are my results and uh, now the conclusions. So the method I'm using in, uh, with this kind of printing, uh, when I have, I don't know, several STL files, I analyze them and choose the risky parts and uh, I separate them. Uh, what are risky parts? Uh, those with small contact area, for example. And it doesn't mean that it is small, uh, but for example, with this uh, CD printed fan shroud on my Ender 3, uh, the middle parts start with very small contact uh, area and uh, it is very risky until it's not connected uh, on with the bridging after I know 20 millimeters. So here uh, it will be very risky to print it as it is. Uh, but here I added some small supports on the bottom to have better uh, area. Of course, uh, I, you can add the brim and similar. Another risk factor is too big overhang, uh, too big bridging. And of course the bridging depends, uh, PLA is better for bridging, uh, PETG, ABS uh, are not so good with this. And uh, it is very important to know your printer and know the possibilities. Uh, but uh, usually in most cases it is the bed adhesion, so part uh, removed from the bed surface. That's why I like better the PI sheet, because the results here are more constant. With the glass, it depends. Uh, for example, glass on my Ender CV2 is very good quality. I have extremely good uh, adhesion with it. Uh, but uh, the glass uh, which arrived with my Sermon D1 and Ender 7 are not so good. Somebody wrote me in a comment uh, to try to clean it with acetone and uh, that it, they will be better. I didn't try that. Uh, I will in near future. Uh, what else? Uh, I will create a checklist. Uh, I will add the checklist in the description because I can show you some uh, checklists here, but I'm sure uh, some of my viewers will have different ideas. And uh, in the description I can change the checklist, but uh, in the video, no. Uh, anyway, I hope I could give you some uh, useful information. Uh, I'm very confused with these results. If anybody has the explanation to it, uh, please uh, inform me. Thank you for watching and heavy printing.